In this video, I'm going to look at the nucleophilic substitution mechanism, and I'm going to look at the reaction between hydroxide ions and bromoethane. So there's bromoethane. There's the hydroxide ion with the lone pair shown on the O minus. So the first thing to explain is the fact that there's going to be a dipole on the carbon bromine bond. And it's going to be that way around because bromine is more electronegative than carbon. And so the it will have a greater share of the electron pair in this covalent bond here. So because of the slight positive charge on the carbon, the hydroxide ion is going to donate a pair of electrons. And we're going to show that as a curly arrow. So that shows the movement of that pair of electrons. And that effectively is going to form a covalent bond between the oxygen and the carbon. The pair of electrons in the CBr bond are now going to be repelled by that um, extra pair of electrons coming in from the OH minus, and that will effectively break that bond, and we call that heterolytic fission. I'll just quickly explain that. The two electrons in that bond are going on, both of them are going on to the bromine. So the carbon receives none of the electrons from the bond when it's broken. The bromine receives two. Two is different to none. And so heterolytic fission. So the products, we've got ethanol. And the bromine will come off as a Br- ion. Just quickly explain that. Going back to this bond breakage. So the bromine already owned one of the electrons from the bond. But it's actually gained the electron from the carbon. There they are there. And so it gets a negative charge. So why is it called nucleophilic substitution? Well, it involves a nucleophile. And the hydroxide ion is the nucleophile. It's the electron pair donor. And why is it called substitution? It's basically the Br has been replaced by this OH group. 